Now, friends, as we come to this 10th chapter of Isaiah, again, I'd like to remind you that this is a series of prophecies. began with chapter 7, goes through chapter 12, and they were prophecies that were given during the reign of Ahaz. And he was a wicked king. And on that black background, these prophecies are given. And in that dark moment, Isaiah's speaking into a local situation, and he's looking down through the ages to the time when God is going to set up his kingdom here upon this earth. And we're going to see that as we continue on here. Now, this chapter 10 is a remarkable chapter. And I think I say that about over half of the chapters of the Bible. And I probably ought to say it about all of them. But it's certainly true of this one. And the theme here is God used the Assyrian way back yonder, over 500 years, 700 years before Christ came. And he used the Assyrian to judge Israel. But God will judge the Assyrian, and he did. And then you have here the great tribulation and the battle of Armageddon. Now, there's stated here in this chapter certain great principles and gigantic programs that are in God's dealings with man and nations. And these are all set before us here in this chapter. The chapter opens with a brief discussion on the courts of that day. The injustice of the courts of the nation are reflected in the culture of the people and the chastisement of God. And the Assyrian, we'll see in this chapter, he's a symbol and type of the future king of the north who shall come up against Emmanuel's land in the last days. Now, this prophecy reaches beyond the immediate future of Isaiah's day, and it extends down to the last days of the nation Israel. Isaiah identifies the period by the designation in that day. Now, the chapter concludes with the awesome picture of the approach of the enemy from the north to the battle of Armageddon. Now, you can see this is a remarkable chapter. So, in the first four verses, we have the judges of Israel are unjust and will be judged of God. Now, will you listen to this as we begin reading at verse 1? Woe unto them that decree unrighteous decrees, that is, that hand down an unrighteous decision, and they should represent justice, and they're not giving justice, and that right grievousness which they have prescribed. Now, these verses right here at the beginning, you may think that you're reading Plato or one of the moralists of that period and since then, because they're talking about justice. Plato had a great deal to say about that. And the one notable exception, of course, is that back of human justice is the justice of God. The judge and the throne down here are to reveal the justice of God, and they are answerable 